Right, so this is part two of a two-part video about the Seberg 1000 background music system. There's a link to part one in the video description, and in that video I was demonstrating how you play back Seberg 1000 background music discs on the official equipment. The only problem is those machines are particularly hard to come by. The records are quite difficult to find, but do pop up every now and again. And that's the situation I found myself in about a year ago. I got hold of a box of the records, but didn't have anything to play them back on. I thought I might never find one of the official machines. So I did a bit of research online and found out how you go about playing these discs back without the proper equipment. You see, the thing is, they're a little bit unusual in size, as you might remember from part one. Nine inches across, two inch hole in the middle, and play at half the speed of a normal LP, 16 and two thirds revolutions per minute. These things aren't particularly difficult to overcome, but I spent quite a few months getting the things together to do this, and I shot a bit of footage for this, and this is before the bit that you saw in part one. So in effect, we're sort of going back to front here. Part two is actually what happened before part one. It's getting all a bit confusing this, so let's just get on with it. Now, to make things slightly complicated, I didn't just want to play one record. I wanted to replicate some of the functionality of the original machines and have the system play a number of discs one after the other automatically. So the first problem I've got to get around is the size of the hole in the center of a Seberg background music disc. It's non-standard, it's two inches across. It might look similar to the ones that you get on the 45s that are cut out for playing on jukeboxes, but it's a larger hole than that. So whilst you can get adapters for those to play them on smaller spindles, those adapters won't fit a Seberg disc. However, thanks to 3D printing, I was able to buy adapters in the correct size. I got these from a chap on eBay. I'm sure if you know where to look, you could probably find these designs and print them yourselves if you had a 3D printer. Now I've got a set of seven of these, so I've got my discs all ready to play, but now I need something to play them on. The next obstacle to overcome is the fact that these records are played at a slower speed than normal, 16 and two thirds revolutions per minute. If you get a record nowadays, it's more than likely it'll be 45 or 33 and a third. Of course, back in the day, 78 RPM was a thing, but 16 and two thirds is a bit of an anomaly. There's a short period in history when talking books were issued on 16 and two thirds revolutions per minute discs. And that's when you need to get your record player from. So you need to go back in time a little bit and find a machine like this, which will play 78, 45, 33 and 16. And this particular machine is the Magnavox Micromatic. It's the machine that's favored by the people trying to play about these Seberg discs without the official equipment because it's also an automatic turntable. That means you can stack up six discs on the center of the turntable and have them automatically play one after the other, which will give you about four hours worth of non-stop music. But before I can do that, there's one more job I have to do first. This turntable was imported from the US, therefore it's designed to run on 120 volts at 60 hertz. I've got a step down power converter for the UK, but it doesn't affect the hertz, the cycles. That means it runs too slow. <laughs> So to get it running at the right speed, I've printed out this strobe disc and I'm going to use that to see when I've got the speed exactly right. But the first thing I need to do is get inside it and adjust the size of the part that's rotating, make it a little bit larger just to correct for the speed difference. Now, on the official conversion kit that was available back in the time, there'd be a little cap that goes over the top of this metal part at the center of the screen and you glue that down with cement glue, according to the instruction manual. Of course, I can't find one of those, so I'm going to do the next best thing and use some heat shrink tubing. So all I need to do is just enlarge the size of the smallest one of those little bits on the top there there just a little bit and that will enable it to run at the right speed so I'm shrinking that to the metal there with a soldering iron and I'm going to put the top back on and we'll see how well that's affected the speed now the idea with this strobe disc you're supposed to get the lines so they look like they're not moving we're looking at the outside disc here the one for the slowest speed of the lot and we want those white lines to look like they're standing still now it doesn't come across very well on this video but it is looking right to my eye so just off that one go there it seems like I might have got the speed right so let's just give it a go so surprisingly that seemed to work first time therefore the next job was to get the thing to work automatically now the way this turntable works it taps the side of the record and then brings the arm in and rests it down on it the only problem is of course these discs are non-standard size, they're nine inches. So 
a turntable like this would be expecting you to play a 7 inch record or a 12 inch it might even work for 10 inches but a 9 inch one is a little bit unusual so it doesn't quite drop in the right place so I just had to keep adjusting a little screw at the back there just getting it so that it did actually fall down on the right place on the record so there we go got that sorted so now I can stack it up finally with six discs now I thought maybe I'd better get all seven in out of a box but it seemed a little bit tight when you lift that arm up it only goes so high and it just clears the tops of the discs so in my experience you can just get six discs on this setup here but that's pretty good so let's turn it on and have a good look at it now I don't know whether you could get other automatic turntables to do this but I'd imagine one of the reasons that people suggest using the Magnavox Micromatic is because of its ability to be adjusted so that it can work properly with these 9 inch discs. <laughs> A slightly ironic twist much of the internals of this turntable were actually made in the UK not too far from me they were exported to the US and badged up as Magnavox but they were made here in the UK and yet I have to import it back here to get one and then use it through a step down power converter but regardless it's working fine now well I say fine there is one small little thing when you get to the end of the stack of records it checks to see if there's any more if there aren't any it will put the arm back in the rest position but because of the adjustments i've made it falls a little bit short of there not a big issue it doesn't mean it rests on the stylus or anything all you have to do is pick the arm up and pop it back into its mount again but that's literally it that's the only thing that's not 100 percent so this applies more to the American viewers, but if you are out on one of your thrift shop visits and you happen to see some of these Seaberg discs, pick them up, keep your eye out for a Magnavox Micromatic, and before long you too can have your own background music system. Okay, so there you go, that's the end of part two. Just a short, simple video, and it wasn't exactly rocket science, but I just wanted to demonstrate what you do if you find yourself in the extremely unlikely situation of having a box of background music discs and nothing to play them back on. It can be done with an old record player and some modern 3D printing. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. listening to? Where's the normal music? It's background music. It's awful. It's like something that you'd hear in an abandoned shop full of zombies. But if there's zombies in it, then it's not abandoned. So do you like this music then? Well, kind of, but only ironically. Eh? How do you mean? Well, nowadays it's cool to like things ironically that you don't really like. How does that work out then? It's just like olives and espresso. Nobody really enjoys them, but you pretend you do, just to look cool and sophisticated. Well, I can tell you that I don't like this music, ironic or not. Well, you're not cool then. I don't care. If listening to this is what's required to be cool, then I don't want to be cool. Ah, now that makes you cool. What do you mean? Not wanting to be cool is cool. So now you're cool because you're anti-establishment. Great, I'm happy that I'm cool. Let's just leave it there. Not cool. Eh? You're not cool anymore. Being happy and contented isn't cool. Oh, there's too many rules nowadays. Forget it. Count me out. Now you're cool again. An outsider who refuses to follow the rules. Really? Not cool. Showing interest in something. Who made you the arbiter of cool? Questioning authority. Cool again. Can we stop this now? What, the music or this conversation? Either would be fine with me. You do know that we're going to get complaints from olive lovers, don't you? 
Well, I'm glad I didn't mention dark chocolate then. Nobody really likes dark chocolate. <laughs>